Metta is really a, a disposition, an attitude to life, a way of relating to whatever arises in the body or in the mind, in the emotional world. It's not uh, trying to make it better as such, but it's putting causes in place for wholesome results. So we can have a lot of joy just simply putting those causes in place. And the Buddha said, you know, whatever we uh, incline the mind towards, whatever we think about, basically, and frequently uh, reflect upon becomes the inclination of our mind. So the more we have thoughts and intentions of loving kindness, the more we start to move in that direction. The mind gets conditioned in a wholesome and positive way. And furthermore, the Buddha said that whenever we have a thought of loving kindness or of compassion or of letting go, giving things away, being generous, uh, being selfless rather than selfish, then it's impossible to simultaneously have thoughts of uh, sensual desire, wanting to get, wanting to exploit, or thoughts of cruelty, thoughts of harm, thoughts of ill will. So even just planting these thoughts in our minds uh, by using skillful means and reflections and uh, imagery from time to time, it's already um, a powerful reconditioning of the mind. And you may find, even if you don't start feeling feelings of metta, in the meditation, it will start to influence um, the way your mind responds to the events you experience in your life. It can come up at the most unexpected of times, which is very beautiful and gives a lot of uh, faith. So see if you can uh, notice those times that you do feel more inclined towards loving kindness and, uh, you know, the irritations, the crankiness, that would be there anyway. So don't always count the faults, just uh, notice when they're slightly softened and when there is a little bit more patience or there is a sense of gratitude, a sense of maybe seeing the good in someone that you perhaps usually criticize or you find fault with. And that could be yourself, right? Often it's ourselves who we live closest to and who we have uh, the greatest kind of fault finding mind towards because we expect so much from ourselves. We try to be so perfect and please all our loved ones. And of course, we can never do that because the nature of life is people will be upset. People will get displeased. And a lot of the time, especially if we're not practicing the Dhamma, we blame everyone else for our upset and our cranky mood. So this is going to happen. But the matter is a protection even for that, you know, so that when people do feel upset with you, we can instead of react, we can actually see how oh, this person's having a hard time. You know, maybe they woke up on the wrong side of bed or, you know, um, I don't know, someone sent them a, the wrong Christmas present or the Christmas card didn't come on time. Um, you know, maybe they're not feeling very loved. And um, sometimes if we respond with negativity, we just reinforce that feeling of dejection in another person. So when we can have patience and understand people only respond that way because they're unhappy then um, we can have more loving kindness. And our minds also start to be a little bit more independent of other people's moods because we have this source of happiness from inside. So it is a practice, it's a cultivation, like everything else on the path. And it's, uh, you know, little by little. The Buddha always said, drop by drop, the jar gets full and you never know when it's going to overflow. So today we'll put in a few more drops and I thought that since it is coming up to Christmas and think since it is uh, becoming uh, a time that's a bit loaded, to be honest, isn't it? Um, either in terms of having to have a good time when you don't really feel like this is your idea of a good time or having to meet family members that are tricky to be with or get you wrong. You know, family members often think they know they know us and we know them, right? So we're in these dynamics that sometimes are quite uh, habitual and uh, almost quite um, unconscious, really. We just slip right back in. And so, you know, there may be that difficult person you're about to meet or maybe there's a sense of loneliness. Other people are meeting their family, but you're all alone. For those who are alone, take heart, so am I. I am so looking forward to having Christmas Day on my own. I have to say, my wonderful guests have made food for me. It's in the freezer. And uh, <laughs> tomorrow also we have a big family coming, like people I don't know. And it's going to be lovely. But, you know, it'll be really nice to see only myself for one day. The first day for about oh, months and months and months. 
So sometimes there's a beauty in being alone as well. So you can always look on the bright side. But uh, yeah, I would like to think about all those sorts of people today um, for who Christmas is maybe not such a joyful time or a little bit of a daunting time. And uh, see if we can spend some meta to ourselves and those we're about to meet. And of course, anyone else that comes to mind. So please uh, find some comfort and ease in your body, first of all, and really give yourself time to settle down. <clears throat> Usually in the morning, especially if you're in Ohio and it's 4 a.m., or even if you're in Oxford and it's 9, 9 o'clock, you haven't finished your tea, so finish some warm liquid to settle you down and gently close your eyes, bringing inside the impression of being with spiritual friends so you know you're connected and yet you're alone, secluded secluded from any social pressures, any busyness, any demand on your time for this, this while. Whatever is yet to be done, that's all in the future. <clears throat> What's done has been done for now. Just this morning, we were talking about the meaning of the Pali word for gratitude, katanyuta. Literally means recognizing what's been done, acknowledging what's been done. What's been done for you, what you've done for others is good enough for now. You've got yourself here. That's most of the work. So now just landing, landing in your body. And gently noticing your mind, your mental state, your emotional world. Being so gentle and welcoming to that as well. Sometimes we think that we're adults, we're all grown up, but really our minds are just like little children, sensitive, in need of love, afraid of rejection from others or from ourselves. See if you can give your body and your mind a little hug, a gentle smile of welcome. It's not so bad, you're not so bad. I can be your friend. giving yourself all the time in the world to arrive. And recognizing all the silence, the space around you. So you don't need to contract. You can just softly expand. Relaxing the body into the space, noticing the air, the ground beneath you, the space above you.
And perhaps taking a long breath out, a few long breaths. Helping you land and relax. And as you become more sensitive to your body, you may notice there are things that you need to adjust. So just gently move any part that needs to be moved or stretched, readjusted, loosened up. And this establishes a sense of connection and respect toward your body, from the friendliness of your mind. Really setting the body at ease. And with a sense of kindfulness, mindfulness, along with kindness, hand in hand. Just gently scanning through the body. So your body is surrounded and infused with a gentle mist. Or maybe soft, gentle, golden rays of the sun soaking through your body from top to toe. Listening deeply. Softening into any sensations you experience anywhere on any part of your body. Caressing any part of your body that feels tight or achy, perhaps where you have sickness, weakness, or discomfort. Allowing this kindfulness to massage those areas simply by staying present with kindness.
Feeling that mindfulness build, the silence build inside the mind, even if it's just a moment of stillness. But noticing that quiet between the thoughts and dropping into it softly, gently, with gratitude for that moment of quiet. Now, if you wish to continue with the metta meditation, you don't need to, you can stay where you are. But if you wish, imagine you're in the company of a very dear friend. Could be the company of all of us here. or a particular friend or friends that you feel extremely comfortable around. Perhaps the closest person to you in this life or maybe a spiritual teacher, a guide. Maybe a child, a nephew niece, grandchild. Bring their presence to mind as if you were with them right now. Perhaps you see images of their face, their smile, or maybe tune into their energy, the feeling that you get when you're with them. some beautiful quality of theirs. And place them wherever it feels comfortable for you. Maybe if it's a child even, holding their hand or giving them a hug. And check any feelings, come in contact with any feelings in the heart area if that's comfortable for you. The area around the chest. And from your heart, imagine wishing them well. Maybe finding some phrases that express your most deeply felt wishes for them. And just repeat those words inside your mind, offering them as a gift to this beautiful being in your life. 
simple phrases such as may you be happy May you be free. May you be well. May you be at peace. Sometimes just one or two phrases is enough. when it's offered from the heart, connected to the meaning and said with sincerity. Keeping that person in mind. And allow yourself to pause between each phrase to listen to the emotional resonance of those intentions of loving kindness that can be felt as a feeling in the body, in the chest, perhaps subtly at first. Just staying present allowing the mind to follow in the direction of loving kindness towards the meaning, the felt sense of that love of those words. Before popping in the next phrase to keep the mind focused on the practice of loving kindness.
Just connecting with the joy of giving without expecting anything in return. All your energy is flowing to this person. This person whose presence you can sense. You're relaxing, filling up with joy. And if you feel at ease and comfortable, you can keep this person's presence with you. A sense of loving kindness that flows between you, keeping you resourced. And just bring to mind if it's comfortable for you. Someone who you're going to meet in the next few days. Maybe your whole family or maybe unknown people coming as guests or your carers. Maybe you're going to be alone. You are the recipient of your love. Bring them to mind. Perhaps someone you find slightly difficult to be around. And from this place of safety, spread meta to them. Wishing them well. Recognizing they too struggle sometimes, suffer sometimes. Have their conditioning in certain skillful and unskillful ways. Just sending metta, using whatever phrases feel appropriate to you. Being very gentle and at any time if you need to, returning to yourself, giving yourself that love. Taking off any pressure to get along, to have things go a certain way, just trusting that you wish this person or persons well, and that's enough.
and staying connected to your own heart and any feelings that have arisen, accepting them all with the same kindness, allowing any images to fade and the metta, the feeling or the intention of loving kindness to spread now. Perhaps into your neighborhood. Where families are preparing to get together for Christmas, maybe with a sense of excitement and some trepidation. Spreading our matter to them. May all beings in this neighborhood <clears throat> know that it's enough to be kind. Take off those burdens, those pressures, and just enjoy being together with acceptance, with grace. And all those people in your area, maybe your immediate neighborhood or town, all those who are sick over this Christmas and New Year, may they too feel, feel cared for, feel held. Those people who don't have a home, May they be protected from the cold. Those who are working in the hospitals, perhaps on emergency call, may they too feel supported, feel peace. May they all have enough to eat and know that someone somewhere cares deeply for the well-being of all beings in this town, in this city, this neighborhood. And allowing your loving kindness, your compassionate concern to spread as far as your mind's eye, whichever direction feels natural for you. Spread across this globe, maybe spending longer in places where there are people that you know, that you love. lingering over those places, those countries and territories that are at war. People in Gaza, Palestine and Israel. People in Russia and the Ukraine. Myanmar, where they fear for their lives, their safety is not at all assured. Those beings who are celebrating, feeling at ease, and those feel beings who are feeling scared, cold, 
hungry. May the power of this loving kindness spread to all beings. May they know that they're not alone. Just as the sunlight comes into the room where I'm sitting, may that sunshine spread and touch every part of this globe, all beings, human or non-human. Visible or invisible, far or near. Those who are enlightened, or on the path, and those who are lost, far from the Dhamma. May all beings know the power of kindness, of virtue, of inner peace. May their hearts be freed. May all the animals enjoy their beautiful natural habitats without fear of them being destroyed. May they be safe, free from harm. May they find enough food in these cold winter months. May all those beings in higher realms, the devas, the brahmaloka, may they rejoice with the goodness that is there in this world, that's very much alive. The generous acts being done. May they hear the Dhamma. May they be liberated, free from all existence, even in those heavenly realms. And all beings suffering in the lower realms, whether real lower realms, the hell realms, the animal and ghost realms, or the realms we create for ourselves, all those who are suffering intensely, may they share the goodness of our lives, the merits that we make through our practice, through our virtue, through our generosity. May they too be free. <clears throat> and with the mind spacious and wide, coming into connection gently, softly, once again with your body. Noticing any feelings of lightness, of ease, and just resting with the same loving kindness towards yourself. Being held, being bathed 
in this universal shared loving kindness. So chant the final blessing to wish you well for Christmas and the new year and every moment of your life. May it be filled with loving kindness or the intention of loving kindness. Never far away. Sabe Sata Sabe Pana Sabe Deva Sabe Pugala Sabe Atabawa Pariapana Sabaitio Sabe Povisa Sabe Aria Sabe Anavia Sabe Deva Sabe Manusa Sabe Wini Padika Awe Rahon Tu Abya Paja Hon Tu Ani Gahon Tu Sikiatanam Bari Haran Tu Dukha Munjantu Yada Lada Sampatito Mawe Gajantu Kama Saka Sadhu 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 <laughs> Very good. I hope you can make some audible hee hee hees because it does really boost your immune system. So you can ward off those cold virus thingies and uh, <laughs> present a smile to the next person who sees you or who you see. So, very good. I have to ring the bell because it's a really nice sound. I hope you can hear it. Put the sound thingy on so hopefully you can actually hear the reverberation. I like that because in the suttas it talks about loving kindness being like a trumpet that you can hear just stretching in all quarters, up, above and below, in every direction and everyone hears that same sound wherever they are. So hopefully that helped you and that helped whoever you have yet to meet and also people that don't even know we're practicing loving kindness I really think this puts out some powerful energy into the world so um, lovely to hear your feedback I would love to hear how you are doing now we've got two whole minutes but it's enough to say a word in the chat and um, yeah from my side I will be seeing you I'll be having a little break for a while um, there is a meeting with the community in uh, January on the 13th but we're going to change the um, the registration link so look out for another message coming up so that it's registration only because we want to give the opportunity firstly to our supporters, our volunteers who um, obviously would have more import to make and who obviously know a bit about where we've come to but everyone is welcome so long as there's space and um, we'll be just having some uh, discussion with this very special guest and myself and uh, in little groups to see how we can support the move and the monastery and ideas for that. So that will be a lovely meeting on the 13th of Jan from 9 till 11. So yeah, it will be registration only, so look out for the update. And um, 
yeah, the Meta and the Sutta class will be back around the 23rd, I think it is, whatever the date is, the Friday and the Saturday, around the 20-something, or is it the 27th, actually? Yeah, it's the 26th and the 27th, because before that I'm going to do a personal retreat. So you'll be catching me right in the heart, like in the last couple of days of the retreat, basically. I thought it's nice to come out of my retreat and share Dhamma and also share the last day, the Metta day, with everybody here and hopefully others as well. So, ah, oh, wonderful. Nice to hear from everybody. I didn't know we had someone, Kalina, from Bulgaria here. That's lovely as well. So, uh, yeah, I'll read a few of the notes just because it's inspiring for people on YouTube as well. Um, so, more balanced and benevolent, uh, peaceful and calm, blessed, peaceful, uh, gratitude and blessings, leaning towards inner peace. These are wishes as well. Warm wishes for a beautiful last few years. And the garlic, no, I'm not going to try that because I'm allergic to garlic, but thank you very much. <laughs> If I try garlic, you won't be seeing me, okay? <laughs> it might not kill me, but I won't be well, so don't worry. I um, have a very specific diet, so I'm the, my own expert on my health, but I appreciate the suggestion very much. <laughs> okay, lots of love to you all, and uh, yeah, we can unmute you now. We'll stop the recording and unmute so we can hear one another's voice. <laughs>